name is Nick Middleton. I'm middle-aged, I live in Middle England and earn a middling salary, writing travel books and teaching geography at Oxford University. My life is extremely comfortable, or rather it was. It all changed when I started writing about the world's most extreme environments. The more I suffered in these godforsaken places, the more I saw that it's the hostile landscapes that have shaped man's existence on Earth. One of the most hostile is the vast area that is kept east and west apart. Crossable only via the network of trading routes known as the Silk Road, this wilderness of mountains, plateaus and deserts is one of the least populated on Earth. But life is sustained there. Just what sort of life my publisher felt was up to me to find out. Squeezed between India and Tibet, in the southern half of the Himalayas, lies the tiny, snow-capped kingdom of Nepal. A barrier to the southerly expansion of the Silk Route, it's the steepest country in the world. Within just a hundred kilometers, the land rises over 8,000 meters, from a little above sea level in the south to the top of the highest point on the planet. It's a dizzy, giddy, vertical country where the Nepalese have had to learn to carve out a life for themselves on the sheer edge of things. The most extreme example of this is the Gurung people, who every year go to extraordinary and terrifying lengths to collect wild honey from giant bees on the sides of sheer cliffs. I plan to join them on their mid-air honey hunt, but first I would have to overcome one big problem. All my life, I have suffered from severe vertigo, feeling wobbly if I even climb a stepladder. My recurring nightmares have always been about falling. Could four weeks' exposure to the steep sides of Nepal enable me to conquer my appalling fear of heights? Could I ever become a honey hunter? I suffered from vertigo and I'd never even touched a climbing rope. If I was going to have any chance of joining the Gurung on their cliff, I would need help. So I put myself in the hands of Dagombu Sherpa, a mountain rescue expert who was taking me to the sharp end of Nepal. It's the slopes that I don't like. It's not a lot to do with, uh, I mean, you can, anybody can do it easily, it's not a problem. Uh, it's just a psychological kind of thing. Well, really. yeah. It's easy for you to say, I know it's just a psychological problem, but the problem is I've got it. Thinking about you can do it, rather than I can't do it all the time, so... Positive, uh, hope, hopefully, yeah, positive. positive mental attitude. That's it. We touched down at Kanjin Gompa, a small village in the Langtang region of northern Nepal. At 3,700 metres above sea level, it's the highest permanently inhabited place in the region almost three times as high as Ben Nevis. If I'd started my journey any higher, I'd have risked getting severe altitude sickness before I'd even begun. Dogombu had arranged for me to team up with three of his climbing friends. Between them, these guys had stood on the top of Everest an impressive seven times. They have to First, the Langtang Kola, Langtang River. They'd planned a little vertigo aversion therapy, a stiff climb up a glacier, followed by a little technical instruction in the form of an abseiling lesson. You know, this is going to be my first time on a glacier. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that's not a problem, because uh, we know how to do with these things, all bit and pieces. Probably we might have a bit of time that we can uh, explain you how to well, walk think, on those yeah, glaciers and things we like do that. Have a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit also, nervous. Yeah, oh, it's not a problem. Also, we are, we will be tied on to the uh, main rope, so it shouldn't be a problem, I would yes. think. 
Yeah. I like your attitude, not a problem, all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dogombu suggested that I spend the rest of the day acclimatizing, which I took to mean take a little wander. As we were only a stone's throw from the Tibetan border, I wasn't at all surprised to find a Buddhist monastery. But I was less prepared for the Swiss influence. Back in 1955, they built a cheese factory here to take advantage of the abundant local supply of high altitude yak's milk. Thank you very much. Ooh, Tilly Lama told me that he and his two helpers produced 7,000 kilos a year. Excellent yes. cheese. But distribution is a nightmare. They have to carry it all down to the nearest roadhead, a four-day walk away. But since so much of Nepal is too steep to build roads through, when you move anything around here, it's mainly yaks or humans. The Nepalese, particularly those from the Sherpa region, have long been famous for carrying heavy loads. But I'd had no idea quite how heavy those loads could be. They, can, they could carry up to 60 kg, that's not a problem really. Really? Yeah, they could, yeah. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Any chance of me trying one? Yeah, you could try one of these. Okay. Yeah. 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 I sit down with it. Yeah. Can't even get my head in there. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> There you go. So is that right? Yeah, it, need, it has to be on the middle. That, middle that, of your that, head? That about, yeah, that's about right. Yeah? There you go. Here we go. Gently. Gee whiz. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm on my knees. Yeah, yeah. God, it's hard on the neck, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it's a bit balancing, it's a bit harder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, which yeah. way? Which way uh, are we going? Actually, we need to go... Don't you say backwards, please. This way. Yeah, oh, this way. It's killing my neck. <laughs> do they have neck support? Uh, no, they don't, do yeah. you? Yeah, it's just uh, kind of. Uh, they used to do it, so. No, I'm going to break my neck, I think. Gee <laughs> oh, whiz. Oh, well done. Wow. <laughs> well done, what? Well two, <laughs> two meters well done. <laughs> well, well done, you didn't. Uh, you know. <laughs> When you're this high, you can safely ascend no more than 400 meters a day. So we spent three days slowly making our way up to the realm of the glaciers. The whole of the Himalayas have been sculpted into U-shaped valleys and pyramidal peaks by these icy bulldozers. They store 12,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water the largest body of ice outside the polar caps. But thanks to global warming, for the last 150 years, Himalayan glaciers have been in a general state of retreat. Some by as much as 40 meters a year. De Gombu had picked the Ganjala glacier for my trial by ice. Five kilometers long and up to 100 meters thick. That's the glacier. Yeah, that's the glacier. It looks a bit uh, tricky, but it should be all right with the equipments and gear. And looks stuff. a bit tricky. <laughs> you said that. It looks horrific to me. Just to get onto the glacier was going to be something of a challenge and meant breaking out the specialist climbing equipment. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, you go through there. Great. Ah. You just need to... It's like putting on a nappy. <laughs> a bit like that, isn't it? Torture instrument, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Instruments of torture. Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah. Let's sit on the back. Right, okay. That's me, is it? Right, I'm right. ready. A meter of snow covered the ice, and the gradient of my nursery slope was attesting 45 degrees. You need to put, use your front point. Or use the front ones. Or if you are not very comfortable with the front point, then you can okay. put sideways. All this kit and manpower was meant to make me feel more secure, but it wasn't really working. What would happen if I lost my footing and fell? You will slide a little bit, tiny bit. Yeah. But you wouldn't be going far way down. You will be going as far as the rope length. Just the length of the road. The only way I could deal with the slope was to keep looking up, so I focused only on following Dagombu's footprints which turned out to be a good strategy, for, in half an hour, we reached the top. And I must admit I was feeling quite pleased with myself, 
and relaxed enough to start enjoying the view. But then Dagombu reminded me that we were surrounded by hidden dangers. This is a crevasse. It's quite a big crevasse. Up here, there are quite a few crevasses around. It's huge. Yes, yeah, it's quite big. This is quite a good one because it's open. We could see it yeah. clearly. But others could be just There could be beneath. just uh, hidden somewhere. It's like um, being on the minefield, really. But <laughs> if you know, then it's not too bad. When they're hidden by fragile snow bridges, crevasses cause more deaths on glaciers than anything else. Dugombu thought that teaching me how to climb out of one would be a perfect initiation. You can climb up using the ice, technical ice axe and ice hammer, both, yeah, that's it, as well as the crampons and both crampons. Right. Both stepping up also. Stepping up to the wall. Yeah. Yeah, OK. OK. That was how to get out. But first, I had to get in. Keep going. Keep going. Am I anywhere near the edge? Yeah. Well, can you... No, you need to change your... Man, it's straight yeah. down. Yeah, it's a bit down, but it's all, it's all right. It, it's not a problem if you dangle. It's not a problem. Yeah. OK. OK, now, left, left bit. Left down. Side. Yeah. Yeah, a bit down. Yeah. Oh! oh. So... <laughs> Sorry about that. You didn't tell me about that <laughs> bit. No, a tiny bit, yeah. Okay, now you need to do, take up this one. Take Hold up. me tight, please. Yeah. Right. I was hanging over the edge, and my arms and legs wouldn't okay. respond. You can just fit against the wall. Yeah. Uh, against the wall, fit. I've got my feet. Yeah. Fit high up, fit high up. Flat fit, slow. Slow lower. Huh? Flat fit against the wall. Flat fit, right. Like that, okay. That's better. It was as though I was having to relearn how to walk, my head having to drive my legs through the motions. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Ah, oh, By the time I stumbled into the bottom, I'd all but given up. Pull, the Gumpy. Pull! There was no way I would ever have managed to get out by myself. OK. OK, Nick. Put yeah, your feet we'll against the wall. Put your feet against the wall. You will be. What on earth was I doing? I couldn't even deal with a 10-metre sheet of ice. OK. Set. OK. Use your left hand. Okay. How was I ever going to be able to handle a 150-metre cliff face? There's a man, but only. Even when I was back on the flat, I didn't dare let go of the ground. Okay. You are you going? Good one. Cross your neck. Just need to come out, isn't it? Yeah, it, the ice was not very good quality, though. Oh, it was poor quality ice. Crappy sauce yeah. I have, so... You did well, though. Oh. Dugombu was just being polite. I knew he must have been asking himself what chance this toddler had of scaling a vertical cliff surrounded by a cloud of angry bees. Leaving the high Himalayas behind me, I was heading south, following the course of the Sun Kozi River. One of the perks of being a member of the International Geography Mafia is that we can team up with fellow professionals wherever we go. I'd hitched a lift with one of my peers, Nabaraj Adhikari, a member of the Nepalese Hydrology Department, who was on a little...